Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Lusk from St. John's Episcopal Church. Welcome to Children's Chapel. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. I'd like to offer us a chapel service for this Sunday, July 5th. So gather your family together and let's pray. What is the first thing we do when we come to chapel? That's right, we light the candles, don't we? And I've already gone ahead and lit those. And now that we have our candles lit, we can sing our gathering song. Will you sing that with me? Come everybody, gather together. Come everybody, gather together. Come everybody, gather together. Come let us worship our God. Very nice, thank you. The next thing that we'll do is we'll say a collect, which is a special kind of prayer. So the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Jesus, we are gathered because you taught us how to be children of God. By your Holy Spirit, nurture us as your people of the resurrection. Amen. Now we will offer a song of praise called the doxology. Will you sing that with me? Great. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Very good, thank you. Well, now I would like for us to look at this. What is this? That's right, it's our church calendar, isn't it? This circle helps us know where we are in the church year. Can you find the Episcopal shield? It is, it's all the way down here at the end of June, and it's on the color of Green. What is the color of green? What season of the church year is that? It's Pentecost. That's exactly right. And you know what? I just noticed the dates for July on our calendar are a bit off. And I am sorry, Miss Sarah forgot to fix that this week, but I will do my best to do that this week. So even though it says July 7th, it's actually July 5th, isn't it? All right, I'm going to move it anyway. And we will pretend that says a five. We can use our imagination, can't we? And that's a wonderful thing. So we journey on through the season of Pentecost. I have a fun story that I'd like to share with you all today. But before we get into it, I wanna ask you a question. Have you ever heard the story of how your parents met each other? Have you ever heard the story of how your grandparents met each other? If you have, it's so wonderful to hear those stories, isn't it? It's important to hear those stories too. They're called origin stories. It's how we learn how our family was brought together. And it also tells us a little bit about ourselves then. Well, there are even stories like that in the Bible. Did you know that? Today's story is going to take us all the way back to the book of Genesis. Where is the book of Genesis in the Bible? Do you know where that is? It is. It's the very first book in the Bible in the Old Testament. In the story of Genesis, we hear lots of wonderful stories. And one of the stories we hear about is, is about a man named Abraham. A man named Abraham who loved God and God loved him and God made a promise to Abraham that he would have lots of children, so many children that it would be the same number as the stars in the sky. And sure enough, Abraham and his wife, Sarah, had a little boy named Isaac. When Isaac grew up, he married a woman named Rebecca. And the Bible tells us the story of how Isaac and Rebecca met. Would you like to hear that story? It's really special. 
So this is the story of how Rebecca met Isaac. God kept the promise to Abraham that he would have many children. God promised that Abraham's son Isaac would have lots of children too. When Abraham was very old, he asked his servant to help find a wife for Isaac. The servant needed to go to a place where the people believed in God. So he went on a long, long journey to the town where Abraham grew up. When he got to the town, the servant knew that he needed to find the woman who would be Isaac's wife, but he didn't know how to find her. He prayed to God for help. He said, God, I will go to the well in this town and ask a woman for a drink. If she gives me a drink of water and offers to get a drink for my camels, then I will know that she is the right one. The servant waited patiently by the well. In the evening, a beautiful woman came to fill her jars with water. Her name was Rebecca. The servant asked, for her, asked her for a drink. Rebecca replied, Sir, here is a drink for you. Let me get some water for your camels too. Rebecca showed wonderful kindness. The servant believed God, heard his prayer. God sent me a very long way to find you, he told her. God has a plan for you to marry a man named Isaac. God has promised that you and Isaac will have many children. I have always wanted to have a big family, Rebecca said with a smile. I know that God keeps promises. I will marry Isaac. After Isaac and Rebecca got married, Isaac prayed for children. Isaac and Rebecca had twin boys named Esau and Jacob. Isaac's children were Abraham's grandchildren, just like God had promised. Isn't that a really neat story? We hear in this story that God kept his promise to Abraham. We also heard in this story that Rebecca trusted God because she married Isaac and didn't really know who he was. But Isaac loved Rebecca. God brought together a wonderful couple and a wonderful family. And let me tell you, the story of Isaac and Rebecca's family is full of interesting events and things like that. So it's really neat and important to hear the stories of our families and how they were brought together. We can learn neat things about our families too that will tell us a little bit about who we are. It helps us learn about our identity. For instance, when I asked about the story of my grandparents, I found out that they came to this country from the country of Hungary. So some of Hungarian culture is a part of who I am and a part of what makes me who I am. So why don't you this week have a conversation with your parents? Call your grandma and your grandpa, call your aunts and your uncles and find out how your family was brought together. Find out your story. I bet it's wonderful. Thanks be to God for that. Now we will say our creed together, which is what we believe. Will you say that with me? We believe in God above. We believe in Jesus' love. We believe in the Spirit too that comes to show us what to do. We believe in God's one church. We believe baptism makes us one with each other. We believe God forgives. We believe in life in the world to come. Thank you. Now we will say our prayers together. And the first kind of prayer that we offer is a thank you prayer. It's important to share with God the good things that are happening in our lives and, the, and we want to say thank you for those things. So if you have something you'd like to say thank you for, let's say that together right now. God, I'm thankful for my family and for my family's story. I'm thankful for 
all of the stories of families that help us to know a little bit about who we are. What are you thankful for? We say, thank you so much, God. It's also important to say to God things that we're worried or concerned about so that God can come alongside us in those things. So if there's something you'd like to share, let's pray about that together now. God, I pray for families whose stories might not be so happy. Please be with those families and let them know of your love and your care in all things. What are you worried or concerned about? We say, help us, God. We trust in you. We also want to say sorry to God for things when we make mistakes. I know that I make mistakes and I need to say sorry to my family or my friends. And it's important to say sorry to God too. But I take comfort in knowing that there is nothing that will ever, ever, ever make God stop loving us. So if you'd like to say sorry for something, let's say that quietly in our hearts. We say we're sorry, God. Thank you for always loving us. God, I thank you for this day and for this community gathered together. I lift up to you our thank yous, our worries, and our sorries. Take those into your heart and transform us so that we can live the lives you want us to live and love the ways you want us to love. Help us, God. Be with us. Thank you, God. We love you. Amen. As we end our service together, we sing our going out song, don't we? Will you sing that with me? Great, let's get our beat started. Go on your way and joy, my friends. Go on your way and joy, my friends. Go on your way and joy, my friends. Let your left foot sing glory and your right say amen. My friends, it's so good to worship with you all today. I hope that you have a good week and I'll see you real soon. Amen.